Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of Block Audio Dynamics. Today we're going to talk about the basics of computational fluid mechanics, or CFD. So we'll begin with a high-level introduction to CFD concepts. We'll talk about uh, steady and unsteady uh, modeling approaches for turbulent flows called RANs and URANs, and we'll talk about what those are. We'll talk about turbulence modeling in CFD near wall treatments and special model of near needed uh, very close to the solid walls we'll talk a little bit about the solution process and i'll end with a demonstration of a workflow using simscale for a very simple case to give you an idea of what the whole process looks like from start to finish the key messages that i want you to take away from today's lecture are that cfd in our context of external flow automotive aerodynamics is really complementary to wind tunnel testing. Both of these are providing useful information. Practical solutions to achieving CFD answers require modeling the effects of turbulence on the flow rather than directly resolving it. And obtaining useful CFD results generally requires producing a high quality discretization or grid, computing the solution, and then post-processing it to interpret what we've obtained. So last time we talked about wind tunnel testing and we realized that there's some things that are quite hard to do in a wind tunnel. So for scale models, it can be difficult to match the Reynolds number and get all the geometry details right. It can be challenging to account for the finite size of a wind tunnel. Um, to generate accurate moving floor effects um, and to deal with things like crosswinds, sudden wind gusts, or incoming turbulence. Also, wind tunnel tests are really expensive, um, both in terms of the electrical power requirements, capital costs for building the facilities, um, and the time for personnel of technicians and engineers to operate them. Finally, measuring a detailed flow field in an experiment can be done but it's difficult and very time consuming. So as I alluded to a few minutes ago, CFD and wind tunnel tests are really complementary. CFD is normally used earlier in the design cycle, before a test object or a sort of mo physical model of a car would be available. And in this way, it's a rapid way to assess the impact of design changes. And later in the design cycle, it's likely that wind tunnel tests will be carried out, but also for the same configuration one would normally do CFD. The CFD is then used to interrogate the flow field. Basically, we can get a lot more information about the details of the flow from the CFD than we normally can from the experiment. So using the CFD, we can determine why and how various design features or parameter variations affect the aerodynamic performance of the car. And the best design and analysis work really takes advantage of the strength of both of these techniques, experimental work and CFD. And this is true in many fields involving aerodynamics, not just uh, automotive engineering. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that the CFD for a flow around a car is, is, is a relatively expensive proposition. When we talk about expense here, we're talking what we call computational expense, which is basically how big of a calculation is it. Even with a large modern computing cluster, you're still looking at the order on the order of about a day of simulation time to be able to, comp uh, to resolve the complete detailed uh, flow around a vehicle. But the key is that for 95% of that time, it's just the computer plugging away at it. There's not people engaged in the process. The people are essentially involved at the beginning and the end. Right, so this is where the human input is extensive in generating the geometry, obviously, setting up the simulation, um, and post-processing and interpretation of the results. And I put interpretation here in bold because this is the key step that, uh, to date, at least, our computing systems are not particularly good at doing. Is If, if I want to uh, look at changing a uh, design feature in order to reduce drag, for example, the CFD will tell me exactly what the drag is and what the flow field is, but it doesn't have an understanding of the governing flow physics to be able to say, well, if you'd like to reduce the drag a bit more, here's a way to do it. Caveat there, there is something called adjoint-based methods, which gives the sensitivity of output parameters to variations in the geometry, 
Um, these are, I would say, fairly cutting edge and they're not widely yet used in design. Um, they're more of a research level activity at this point.